418 Radio. The talk with Luke 418 Radio host. Dial area code 602 753 1950. Press 1 to listen live to Luke 418 Radio from your cell phone. Dial area code 602 And worldwide on the internet via satellite. This is Luke 418 Radio Network. You guys, you guys, you tuned into Luke 418 Radio Talk Show, the leading cutting edge of Christian radio. Exposing the works of darkness and declaring a life of righteousness. Your host, Pastor Bill and Valerie French. Welcome to the Luke 418 Radio Talk Show, the leading cutting edge of Christian radio. Today, folks, we'll be finishing on part two on the final hour in the Bible by Pastor Valerie French. Today is going to be a very special day of teaching, so I invite you all to be sure to invite your friends on social media so they can listen and learn today. Pastor Valerie French, would you open up with a word of prayer? Sure. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's going to be some real inf- good information today. God bless you. Lord Jesus, I ask now that you would come and be with us today. Bring your Holy Spirit, Father God. Illuminate our minds and help us to understand these things that are happening in the last days. Well, praise God. I, I had on my heart speaking a series on uh, the, what is actually called eschatology. I know that seems like a long word, but it actually just means the study of the last days. And we are going to study the end times because I believe that's the days that we're in. We are in the final hour that the Bible speaks about. And one of the topics that's uh, important and to those that are wanting to understand the end times, is the rapture. And I'm going to be speaking about the rapture today. You see, there's a lot of terminology in the Christian circles. And when people come into the church, they hear all these words and phrases that they, they don't understand. And maybe they, they, they understand the words as far as, okay, I know you talk about the rapture, and then people talk, oh, yeah, the rapture this, the rapture that. And when the rapture happens... But you go, you're looking at them going, well, okay, what? What is the rapture? Where does the rapture talked about in Scripture? Well, the rapture is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. And if you'll go to, you have your Bibles with you, we can go there and turn there and uh, we'll read it. It says, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall we always be with the Lord. Now what Christ is referring to here about preceding those who are asleep. And uh, this is Paul preaching. And he is saying that we who are alive and remain, which is Paul and the disciples, the apostles, all the saints in the New Testament, will by no means precede those who are asleep. And that's what Paul was referring to. And the people that are asleep, and in the Bible when it says asleep, it means death. So these are Christians who have died in the Lord, people who have died in Jesus before the remaining ones. And they will go up first. Now, I've read these scriptures many times about we who are alive and remain. And notice I mentioned that it was Paul and the disciples and the saints at that time. When actually many Christians believe that this is referring to them. But I would say that Paul 
and the disciples, from what I've learned in the New Testament and the way they talked about Jesus' coming, they actually thought that they were going to be alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Because it says we here. It doesn't say all those later on down the road, you know, 2,000 years later that are alive and remain. It says we. So they did think that they were going to be alive when Jesus Christ came back. But we can see that, that they did go on to be with the Lord. And at this time, they weren't actually up in the rapture. And that there were going to be many years. And now 2,000 and some years now waiting for the Lord to come back before we would see the rapture. And that's okay. There's nothing uh, bad about that. There's no reason that we should think that Christ will never come back or that he lied. That's not true at all. And in verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So here we go again. The ones who were preceding us, the dead in Christ, will rise first. And that's just saying those who have died in Christ, those who have been on, you know, died before the rapture, will be in the ground uh, in a burial, or they'll be, you know, sometimes people were killed by fire. They were burned at the stake, and, and who knows where they were buried. The ashes went everywhere. Um, those the Lord will gather up the dead, even if they're in ashes, even if they're under the sea, even if they're in the ground, even by the bones. He'll gather all those spirit of those dead in Christ. He'll, he'll gather up the bodies, actually, of those that are dead in Christ, and they will rise first. And then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord forever and ever. And it says we'll meet the Lord in the air. And it talks about the clouds in the air. Well, that is the first heaven when it speaks of clouds. That's our atmosphere down here before it goes up into space. So this is speaking of the rapture. And where they get the word rapture is from a Latin word, harpizio, which means caught up, rapture. And in the Greek, it's, it means a catching away, a snatching away. And that word caught up is depicting a very sudden event. And what it means is that we will be translated in the twinkling of an eye. And we will be caught up together to be with the Lord and meet him with those who have died in Christ. Now, there are three heavens of a mention. The first heaven is the atmospheric heaven with the clouds and the sky that we can see, the blue sky. The second heaven is the stars, the sun, the moon, the planets, the space. That's the second heaven. And the third heaven is actually heaven. That's where God dwells. That's where Jesus, and that is actually the heaven that we talk about, where the throne room, where all our loved ones who have died in Christ uh, who will be eventually where we will go when we leave the air. We will go up to be in heaven with Christ. Well, the things that are happening here on earth during the tribulation will be going on. Now, in the book of Thessalonians, Paul had to confront an issue that had been taking place because many of the people who had heard these things from Paul thought, that Christ had already come back. So Paul says in chapter 2, so 2 Thessalonians verse 2, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, from us, as though the day of the Lord had already come. And then there's an admonishment in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Because what had happened is be, what they had thought about the coming of Christ they thought it was imminent it was going to happen in a few days and they thought well if Christ is coming back we don't have to work we can quit our jobs and and just wait so it says here for even when we were with you we commanded you this if anyone will not work neither shall he eat for we hear that there are some who walk among you in a 
disorderly matter not working at all but are busybodies. So this is what happened. They thought that Christ was going to come back any split second and that they didn't have to work anymore. So they quit their jobs and they were pretty much uh, uh, homeless at that point. And they just went, uh, you know, walking around from house to house, getting food from people, not working. And then they turned into lazy people and busybodies. And uh, Paul was telling them, don't do this. You must wait for the Lord because he, he, the, the coming of the Lord will be as a thief in the night. Now we see a verse here in Revelations 3.10 that says, Because you have kept my command to preserve, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those that dwell on the earth. Now this verse, has you can read it in several different versions, but it does tell you about this rapture. And it says, because you have kept my command of perseverance and you have watched and waited for me and you have not done ungodly things, have you not not left being righteous, waiting for me, being patient? Christ says, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. And that hour of trial is the final hour. That is the seven-year tribulation that comes on the whole world. And it says that God will, it will come to test those that dwell on the earth. Now, the word I wanted to center in on here is the word from, actually, in this verse. In many versions in Revelations 3.10, it uses the word keep you safe from the hour of temptation or the hour of trial. And in the Greek, it actually uses the word ek, which means different from from. From is the actual word apo in Greek. But ek actually means out of. And I think if you read it with the correct word out of, it reads much better. That he will also keep you out of the hour of temptation and trial, which will come upon the whole world to test those that dwell on the earth. Now, it's interesting that you see the word oppo because the word from, because from could mean if he keeps you safe from the hour of testing by the rapture, that you won't have to go through that seven-year tribulation. And it can also mean from that if you're even here during that hour of tribulation, he will keep you safe from the Antichrist, from the horrible things that are going to happen to all the people on the earth, from all the evil, from the mark of the beast, from all the things we hear about, he will keep you safe from that. But I really believe it is more likely to be the correct word ek here used as out of. And I believe that Christ will keep us safe out of the hour of trial because that hour will be so horrific on the earth. It'll be so horrible that I think that personally we will be kept out of that hour. And that's why I believe in the rapture. And there's a lot of people that are not sure when the rapture will happen during the tribulation. Between that seven-year tribulation that I spoke of last time, I spoke about the final hour, I went into great detail about what that seven hour represents and why it's in the Bible like that as seven hours of great trial and tribulation. But there's many people who have set up a, a uh, belief system of that tribulation period And I'll talk about it in greater detail later. But right now I want to mention there's a pre-trib, a mid-trib, and a post-trib. And in that seven-year period. So before the tribulation seven years, there's something called a pre-trib rapture. In the middle of the seven years, that's called the mid-trib rapture. And at the end of the seven years, tribulation, It's called the post-trib rapture. 
Now, there's been tremendous controversy and unfortunately argument about when that ra- when the rapture is going to actually be. Will it be before the tribulation, in the middle of the tribulation, or at the end of the tribulation? Well, many, many years have gone by, and, and Christians have thought and pondered this uh, for, for, you know, as long as I've been alive, <laughs> as 60 years, you know. I, I've heard many, many things about this time, and many would argue, banter back and forth, and ask, when would this be? Now, the, the reasons why people believe in the pre-trib rapture is because of what I spoke here. If God will keep us out of the great hour or trial that's coming on the whole world, he'll keep us out of the seven-year tribulation. And before that tribulation comes, he will come in the great rapture and take us up in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And another good proponent for the pre-trib rapture idea is the fact that the seven-year tribulation correlates with the seven-year marriage supper of the Lamb. And when we're up in heaven at the rapture, we will be as the ten virgins who the parable of the ten virgins speak about, the fact that when the bridegroom comes, who's Christ Jesus, as a thief in the night and takes the brides away for the for the seven year marriage supper of the Lamb, that will be in the pre trib at before the tribulation hour. So the tribulation seven year period will correlate with the seven year perfectly will correlate with the seven year bride groom coming to take the bride for the marriage supper of the Lamb, which will be seven years. So we'll be up in heaven for seven years, and the tribulation will take place for seven years. And that's a good uh, way to see the pre-trib rapture. Now, the mid-trib rapture is broken up into a tribulation of seven years, with three and a half years in the first part of the tribulation, and three and a half years in the second part of the tribulation. Now, in Revelations 3.10, if I've spoke, it also in some versions talks about the great wrath. So it talks about the wrath of God coming on the whole world. Now, in the seven-year tribulation period, there's going to be a time of peace, and it's called a false peace on earth. And in, in Jeremiah, it says, uh, you know, the, the people on the earth will say, peace, peace, but Christ said there. But God said there's, there will be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes. So the peace time will be three and a half years. And the wrath time will be three and a half years. So that breaks, breaks up into the middle of the tribulation hour. And that's when the, uh, the Antichrist will come on the scene during that tribulation hour. And he will have all the saints that are not gone up in the pre-trib rapture. He will have all the people who accepted Jesus Christ during that tribulation hour, which are called the tribulation saints. Because there's going to be many Christians who are going to witness, the not Christians, but there's going to be many people who witness the rapture of the Christians. And they're going to go, oh, no, we've missed it. We've been left behind. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? They're going to be so frightened. And... What they're going to have to do is be there during the tribulation, and that are they are called the tribulation saints, and I believe that's very different than the bride of Christ saints who go up in the rapture. Well, they'll be called the tribulation saints, and these tribulation saints will have to have their heads cut off by the Antichrist in order to be saved because they will not take the mark of the beast. And I'm definitely going to go into this in more detail later. But right now I want to focus in on the mid-trib, the mid-trib rapture. So the mid-trib rapture will happen, I believe, in the middle of the tribulation. And this is the possibility that the saints will go up and we will take part of that peace time in the tribulation hour. And then we will go up with those saints who are beheaded in the middle of the tribulation and go up in the mid trib. Now, there's a there's actual some truth to the fact that we could go up in the middle of the tribulation hours, the rapture. And then there's the post tribulation rapture. 
Now, this one I've heard people speak about, and I've I've heard them talk about why they believe this is true. But this one doesn't seem to hold water for me as, in a sense that I can't see how Christ coming in the second coming, where all eyes shall see him, and and you know everybody's going to see Christ coming in his second coming, which is the Jewish, uh, the Messiah coming uh, on the horse horses with all the armies with him and everything. I don't see how he's going to come back like that, and then all of a sudden come as a thief at the night at the same time and take us up in the rapture to meet him in the air and go to be with the Lord. Now some people have put this all together. And uh, they they feel that this could happen, but I just don't think that a post trib makes much sense, actually. But I won't refute anybody that believes this, because we must love our brothers and sisters, no matter what we believe on this issue. And I heard uh, two very prominent prophecy teachers, well known, speaking. And even the man that I knew was a post-trib person, and uh, he was a wonderful man of God, but he was adamant about the post-trib. He was looking at someone who was a pre-trib rapture person, and they were together on a talk show, a Christian talk show, and they were, you know, they were sitting together. And the one from the post-trib looked at the one who believed in the pre-trib and said, Brother, when the Lord comes in the air and we go up and we meet him in the air, I'm going to look over at you, and I'm going to say, Brother, you were right. Let's go. You know, praise God. That that really ministered to me, that we shouldn't argue as Christians. We must love each other, no matter what we believe about this issue. So praise God. I I do believe a little bit more, lean more to the pre-trib rapture, but I can also see why it could happen in the middle. But there's a scripture in Matthew 24, verse 36 through 39, that says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And some versions say, nor the Son. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. So praise God. It says that no one knows, nor the Son, not even the angels of heaven, but only the Father. Now, this verse was a real stickler for those in the uh, first century of the church. When they were vying over the Trinity issues they couldn't see how Christ would not know when he was coming back. <laughs> but this says that the son doesn't know what the father would know only. And since God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, how could the father know something that the son and the Holy Spirit wouldn't know also? But we must take it on faith, and I believe if you see it in the spiritual realm and don't use your logical Uh, analytical mind and we believe by faith that this can be that God can make it this way where the son doesn't know something that the father only knows because the father's going to look down on the earth and I believe I've seen it this way because I asked the Lord about this and I believe he showed me a picture that the father was going to look down on the earth and see it as a harvest field and there was everything Uh, growing in the harvest field and uh, beautiful fruit and uh, or wheat or whatever it was looking like a harvest of some kind and the fruit the the things that he was looking at were ripening and ripening and getting so ripe and that time when it was just at the peak of the ripest point to be harvested only the farmer knows when that point of that harvest is the exact perfect ripeness of that fruit by experience he knows the best time of that fruit ripening it says only the father knows and he's going to look down and see the fruit and he's going to say okay it's almost ready you know but we're going to wait for his saying that's it boom it's ripe okay son you go get my saints you go get the loved ones the the 
the remnant, the ones that have waited for us, the ones that kept their garments clean from the world, the ones that are ready, the ones that have had their lamp with oil, the ones that are ready for the rapture. You go get them right now, and boom, in a split second, he's going to come down. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 52... It says, Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trump will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So here it is speaking of the moment, the twinkling of an eye. And this has been calculated to be 11th of a second. And that this will be the time when the rapture happens. And it says the last trump. When the archangel, as I said in First Thessalonians, the trump shall sound. And the last trump. And in a twinkling of an eye. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up with those that have died in Christ. In the rapture. To be with the Lord forever and ever. Praise God. It's so fantastic that we will be with the Lord in the rapture. Now, there are some scriptures and in the New Testament. There are many types of rapture in the Bible and in the Old Testament, which speaks of uh, many of those saints did many uh, types and, and, and pictures of the rapture. Now, one of them is in Genesis chapter 7, where it talks about the Noetic flood, the flood that came on the earth. And this has been talked of much in the Bible. And people talk about this flood all the time. And I won't in, go into the great detail of the story, except we know that God commissioned Noah to build an ark and to fill the ark with all the animals, two of two of every kind of animal, and that God would bring a great flood on the earth to destroy the earth because the earth was filled with nick wickedness. The whole earth was filled with violence. And there were great evil on the earth. And we have found out that there were huge giants on the earth because the angels that had sinned had come down and they had seen the daughters of men and they found them fair and they wanted to marry them and have children with them and the children that were born unto them. And this was a great sin and a great abomination in God's eyes. And they came down and these children were born, were called Nephilim or giants. And they filled the earth and they were causing great havoc in the earth and eating people, it was horrible. Because when the, when the animals ran out and the food ran out, they started eating each other and eating the people. It was just a horrible time on the earth, the days of Noah. Horrific time. And God said he repented and he was sorry for that he'd made man because of what had happened on the earth. But he found grace in the eyes of Noah. And he said he would not destroy the whole earth except that he would save Noah and his family and all the animals. So Noah built the, the ark. And when Noah and the animals had gone into the ark, it said in chapter 7 of Genesis, verse 16, that the door was shut. God shut the door. And that is a type of the rapture, that we are in a spiritual ark with the Lord, and we are waiting for the time when he comes and the door is shut. And we will be taken to be with Christ. And Enoch also had an experience of the rapture in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. Where it says, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. So Enoch was a righteous man. He walked with God all the days of his life. He was righteous. And God saw his heart. And he was the one on the earth at that time because he lived before Noah. It was a very wicked time also on the earth. Those years between Adam when he had fallen and Noah. And Enoch walked with God 
And all it says is he was not, for God took him. And that was a type of rapture. And then Elijah was also taken up in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. He appeared a chariot of fire, and Elijah went up to be with the Lord. Now Elisha was his servant, and Elisha was hanging around with Elijah everywhere he went. And he, had, he was the only one that came and witnessed this. And when he was with Elijah, who he admired greatly, he saw as a chariot coming down out of the sky, picking up Elijah and taking him to heaven. And that was a beautiful depiction of the rapture. And also we see in the New Testament the parable of the ten virgins. In Matthew 25, 1 through 13, And I spoke briefly of this, where the ten virgins went out to buy oil for their lamps, and they were told to get oil. Well, five of the virgins went out and got oil, and they were ready, waiting for the bridegroom to come. But the other five were the foolish virgins who waited. Ah, he's not going to come. We can wait. We We don't have to worry about it. Well, while they waited... The Lord did come. And then they panicked and they said to the other five virgins, go out and get us some oil. We don't have any oil for our lamps. And the five virgins who were wise said, we can't go out and get you oil. You had to go to oil for yourself. Go out and get it now. You may have a few seconds left. Go out and get it. Well, when they went out and got it, the bridegroom came and they were ready and the foolish weren't. And he said the door was shut. And this is in Matthew 25, 1 through 13. So this is a type of the rapture also, that we must be ready for the bridegroom, the Jesus, the Christ. Because in the Jewish tradition of marriages, the bridegroom would come like a thief in the night. He would come secretly and get, take the bride. And this is a real beautiful depiction here of the bridegroom, of Christ. And we are the bride of Christ. Christ loves us. We were like we are alike and depicted unto a bride to him. This is so fantastic because the love between a, a bridegroom and a bride is so wonderful at this time in their life. And and praise God, I pray that, that uh the, the the godly depiction of a of a beautiful marriage between a man who loves the bride and the bride who loves the groom and how they must love each other for the rest of their lives unto God is a beautiful trinity right in itself of the love that Christ has for us so that Jesus as the bridegroom comes down and takes us and that is such a wonderful beautiful depiction of the rapture and also in Revelations chapter 11 verse 11 and 12 it speaks of coming up hither it speaks of the two witnesses who came up and ascended into heaven in the cloud. Just like in the air, what Christ said in First Thessalonians, we will meet him in the, in the air. These are two people that are in the book of Revelations witnessing to those here that are on the earth and telling them and to repent of their abominations and their horrific sin that will be going on at that time and telling them what's going and this will be happening in Jerusalem. And they will be preaching and witnessing on the earth, in the streets, and, and and telling people, come, you know, get out of the evil, get out of the sin, look what you're doing. But it says that people will be so hateful and angry at that time, so much ungodliness will be on the earth at that time, the Holy Spirit will not be there. It'll be a horrific time, and people will hate God, hate Jesus, hate anything to do with the Bible, that they will kill these two witnesses. And they will be killed, and their bodies will lie in the streets, but it says in Revelations 11, 11 through 12, that their bodies will be resurrected, and many people will see this actually happen, that their bodies will be resurrected right then and there, and they will ascend into heaven in a cloud. And that is another type of the rapture. And, you know, the, the, another thing that has been talked about in Christian circles for many, many years concerning the rapture is the timing of the rapture. Even though we won't know the day or the hour, it says that we will know the season. 
And there's been a theory going out for many centuries, even in the early church days, called the six-day theory. People go, well, what is that? What is the six-day theory? Well, it says the six-day theory is that God made the earth in six days, according to Genesis chapter 1, and that the seventh day is the day of rest. So that he made the world and worked for six days and labored to make it. And on the seventh day was the day of rest. So the world will go on for six days. And then the seventh day will be the day of rest or the rapture. When we get to be with the Lord for a thousand years. And the first, the sixth day, the original first six days will be a period of 6,000 years. And how they calculate this all into being a thousand years is that there's a scripture that says a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And they thought, okay, a day is a thousand years. So if it took six days to make the earth, it took a thousand years as one day, two days, three days, four days. So they kind of, accumulate the 24-hour period of making the earth in one day or making the the uh, earth in six days, 24-hour periods, into 6,000 years, and then the day of rest being 1,000 years. And then they correlate that into the 1,000-year millennium. So whether or not this is a true theory, it makes sense that the world has gone on for 6,000 years because the 4,000 years was before Christ came, then Christ came in his death, and then the 2,000 years after Christ came is the two days added to four days, and then you have the 6,000 years. And then you have the day of rest, which is the 7,000 years. Well, actually, I'm not sure, even though people have talked about all of this, and be, well, many people have believed this to be fact, actually in Revelations, and I'm I I actually have to look up that verse. I don't have it on hand right at the moment. But you can use a, a concordance or you can look up that that verse in your uh in the um internet very easily. And what it says is a day as the Lord is a thousand years is as one day and one day is as a thousand years. And actually what I believe that verse means is that a day in heaven and a thousand days is as nothing. It's it's there's no time. That's what I believe that means. It doesn't really mean that a day equals a thousand years. It means that there's no time. God lives and dwells in a dimension in heaven that there is no time. So that's what that means. So I don't think you can calculate. The rapture. I don't think you can calculate all these days and years. And I think that's where the church has run into a little trouble because they've tried to calculate all these days and everything when the day the Lord would come. And they come up with certain times in history. And then they're so sure of that day that many people have even quit their jobs, like Paul talked about in, in Thessalonians there, warned them not to do that. But even so, people have done that. And they've thought, oh, it's going to be certainly on this day and hour. And they quit their jobs and they waited and they went up to a hill. Many people already, they sold all their possessions. And then they waited and the day came and then boom, it didn't happen. And they were all disappointed and actually so many probably devastated because it didn't happen. I pray that no one would do that and be devastated thinking that the Lord is not coming. And so this is why the rapture has been such a controversial issue with us today now there's another interesting now as i bring things into the last days into the times that we're living in right now you know many years ago i had seen a paper that had uh, like a flyer and it was before all this alien thing got really serious and it talked about the fact that the aliens were going to come and take the Christians off the earth because the only thing that would cause the aliens not to come and to be believed would be the Christians because they believe Christ is going to come and 
have the rapture where we'd all be taken up immediately and disappear off the earth. So I thought it was very interesting many, many years ago that I saw that about the aliens. And I put it away. I didn't think about it for many years, and I'd actually forgotten about it. And then now all of a sudden we're getting this huge influx of the disclosure now, the alien invasion, the aliens are coming. Now even amazingly enough, the Pope believes that the aliens are our friends and that the aliens are coming. And he's even got a tel- uh, telescope on Mount Graham in Arizona called the Lucifer Telescope that looks into the heavens, I mean into the space, the second heaven, and he's seen this armada of these aliens coming to Earth, or he's looking for it. In fact, they said they've seen so many UFOs up there, it's hard to see anything else. And they do believe that these aliens are coming. And I don't think the Pope has actually said it, but he's actually alluded to the fact that the Catholic Church is tired of waiting for the Lord to come back. And I'm paraphrasing this. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. But I really believe that there's many in that faith that have believed for so many years that Christ is coming back and they haven't seen him come back. And I think they've given up waiting. And I believe they're starting to take on this new delusion. And I believe it is a delusion, as Second Thessalonians chapter 2 speaks of, the great delusion, which I spoke of, is that the aliens are going to come, say that they have created us, There isn't any God or Jesus or anything like that. And that they are coming back to save the world from nuclear annihilation. And that they will save us and they will govern us and they will be our friends. And that we can go into this new world order and all live as a big happy family with all these weird aliens and things like that. (laughs) Well, you know, the devil is very clever. He's found a way to rationalize the rapture. And to say that when the rapture happens, that it wasn't the rapture, it was actually the aliens, they took us because we were troublemakers. And we were the ones that didn't want this new world order. We were the ones that didn't want all this to happen. And we were fighting against it tooth and nail. And the and the Republicans and our our, you know, the Christians and and our what has happened now has thrown a wrench in their works. Oh goodness gracious. President Donald Trump got in, oh my gosh. That, they didn't see that coming, and they were all set up to have this nuclear war and, and have the New World Order and the, and the aliens and everything right last in last November. It didn't happen. God intervened miraculously. Praise God. He came in and said, no, I'm not, you're not going to do it on your time. You're going to do it on my time because I am the God, the creator of all earth, and I'm not going to let you do this on your time t- table." as much as you want it to happen. So God intervened miraculously, and the hour is not yet. God has given us a space of time, although I think it is extremely short. I really do. The, The Christ coming is imminent because God has given us this period of time, however long it is, to witness and preach throughout the whole world, and then the end shall come. So praise God. I think I've uh you can understand the rapture a little better now. Um I am very concerned although for those who are young now, our young people. My heart is broken because of the young generation that has grown up now. They really don't want to have anything to do with Christianity, I feel. And I won't put them all in a big group like that. I can't say they're all like that. Um, We have to be careful stereotyping people or we start getting angry. And that's where this hatred for certain groups of people happens. And we shouldn't do that by any means. But I can see, as I spoke of last uh, session when I talked about the final hour, I talked about the great apostasy. And I believe this is happening right now with our younger generation. The great apostasy, 
of all the people who don't want to have anything to do with God. They don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. They don't want to have anything to do with the old Orthodox faith. They're tired of hearing all the rules and regulations. They're tired of hearing, actually, they're tired of hearing the hypocrisy and the fighting that goes on between the people of different faiths, the Catholicism, the Protestantism, the great wars that have happened because of all the the doctrines of the Bible and things like that. They're just sick and tired of it all. And I would have to say that mankind created all that havoc. God never meant it to be like that. God never meant the Catholics and the Protestants to kill each other in wars. God never meant those bloody, horrible wars of that because he wants the the brethren to dwell together in unity, as it says in the Bible. But it was a man's stubbornness, man's hatred that became so evil that they started killing people that didn't believe in their faith and killing one another to create this animosity and this hatred, which is just ballooned up into a horrible, evil lie that all Christians are hypocrites. All Christians are just wanting to fight and kill everybody. That all these religious wars... Well, the Bible speaks of loving one another. And yes, God does speak of his wrath. And we are talking about the judgment of God on the ungodly in the last days. God wants us to be free of sin. God wants us to be righteous and holy. God wants us to live a life without debauchery. And oh my goodness, what debauchery we are in right now. I believe the rapture is going to happen very, very, very soon. Because I really don't believe the earth can go on much longer that God can look and see the evils that are going on because God sees everything in the dark corners. He sees all these horrible, horrific things that are happening on the earth. And now it's opening up and the evil is getting worse and worse. It's waxing worse and worse, just like the Bible talks about the evil days just before the tribulation. Oh, how horrible the tribulation is going to be folks it's it's just going to be you don't want to be there it's going to be so horrible and we're seeing now in my lifetime i have never ever ever dreamed that i would see some of the headlines that i see now in the news and even during our great election that we had there was horrible horrible things coming out on wikilinks and things coming out about pizzagate Things coming about the global elite and what things, even the Clintons and Hillary and different people, uh, Obama, I, you know, I hate to mention names, but these people were all counted and pedestined. People in our higher government and that were doing these horrible things, witchcraft, they were in the occult. They were, oh, I can't even hardly speak of it, of Pizzagate, where they were taking children and and bringing them. Uh, and eating them, eating people, spirit cooking, occult rituals where they were were eating people and, and, and taking their blood and drinking their blood. Now, I'm not saying that all the people that I had just mentioned were doing this. I'm just saying that some of them were and that it was a horrible, horrific thing that came out and that this is the times we're living in. And there's also horrible times that I'll mention that I'll probably talk in the more detail, which I hope to in my next talk with you. I want to speak more about these things. That the evil is so great on the earth right now. I'm just trying to paint you a picture, even though I hate to talk about it, of the Nephilim, the that they're supposed to come back in these last days before the rapture, being the days of Noah, and that they'll be hybrids on the earth there'll be animals mixed with different animals as we've seen horrible different kinds of animals i've never seen these crazy animals i've been seeing on on pictures of i mean in the earth it's horrible things they're mixing together in the hideous looking things and 
the Nephilim that are coming, these giants that are coming back, these 20 to 25 foot people, these horrible Nephilim creatures and all the evil things they're doing and the, and the things that are happening on the earth. I just, I'm just painting a picture how horrible it will be. I pray the rapture will happen. Let's just pray the rapture will happen. The things they're doing to our children, not knowing what gender they are, the horrible things. But praise God. God is there to take care of us. He's going to take us out in the rapture. I pray that he will. Pray that he will take us out. Just pray that he will come as he promised. And I believe the Bible. I believe the word of God. I believe that Christ has never lied to us. And he said he will come as a thief in the night to take all those off the earth when it gets so horrific, so horrible. He will keep us safe from that final hour that comes on the earth. Praise God. We have a blessed hope. Jesus Christ, if you are born again today and you follow him and love him and do his will and his purpose, you will be taken off the earth in that fleeting moment in that 11th of a second. Praise God. We do look for that blessed hope. Well, God bless you today. Bless all those that have heard on the on the air today. I, I hope you've uh, learned about the scriptures, about the rapture. And I pray that you will tune in. And I believe I have one more segment that I'm going to be teaching on this. So God bless you. Pastor? Do you sometimes feel that you just can't control your thoughts? Do you feel hounded by bad memories of the past that still feel alive today? Are you hurting on the inside? If so, Luke 418 Counseling Center can help free you from the pursuit of that mental and spiritual anguish. Pastor Bill French has spent a lifetime helping the tormented and healing the wounded. Free yourself from the past and free yourself from the hurt you're feeling today. If you are experiencing repeated feelings of anger, hatred, lack of self-control, anxiety, or confusion, call the Freedom Doctor, Pastor Bill French, today to set up a consultation. 951-402-8530. Pastor Bill French at the Luke 418 Counseling Center is a specialized Christian-based counselor. Call us today, 951-402-8530. Luke 418 Radio has been commissioned in these last days to preach Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the only name written under heaven by which men might be saved. Our mission is to teach and train up the body of Christ in the Great Commission to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to cast out evil spirits, pray over the sick, that they may be healed. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. If this program is a blessing to you and you would like to take part in this end-time harvest of souls, Join us by donating online. Go to www.luke418radio.com. God bless you.